ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. In the next 15 minutes, I will just give you a brief overview about the current status of 3D echo for assessing the Lebensjou functions. The 3D echo has been evolving rapidly during the last two decades. The major breakthrough of this technology is moving from the reconstructive 3D echo to real time, both from trans approach and the trans approach. In the early generation, in the first generation of trans 3D echo was using sparse array transducer, they created pyramidal volume data set in a single half bit and displaced the image from two orthogonal planes and two or three parallel short axis planes using for the ventricular function and ejection flashing evaluation. The technology at that time was very exciting, but the image quality was very poor and the system was very bulky, difficult to manipulate in the routine world. So the lifespan of this technology was very short. In the early of these centuries, the second generation of real-time 3D echo was developed using volumetric 3D data sets. The technology of this real-time instrument can be displayed the image either in a narrow real-time or in a narrow sector size, or we need to get it four to seven consecutive bits to create a full volume data set. The major limitation of this technology is uh, there are a lot of stitch artifacts during the full volume data set and uh, due to the hard region and motion artifacts. The, we need also offline data analysis to get uh, quantitative information about the level of volume and functions. Recently, the third generation of real-time transforation 3D echo was introduced using one volume data set and uh, created a full volume of the leverage in one heartbeat. This breakthrough technology has a bright future, but currently there are only a limited empirical data can show. And uh, we are still waiting for more uh, scientific data to validate these technologies. The evidence uh, using the volumetric 3D data set for assessing the electrical function can be providing global and the regional data. There are several different approaches. One is uh, using the volumetric state data set with or without contrast echo enhancement. Using this volumetric 3D data set, it can be avoided for shortening of the language code and without geometric assumption can be automatic endometrial endocardial tracing without the uh, uh, observer bias. So this is uh, technology has been applied in our daily practice. From the current evidence-based uh, studies have shown this technology uh, demonstrate the accuracy and the reproducible. From a number of uh, studies already show the real-time 3D echo for lab ventricle volume and ejection specimen are correlated very well with the cardio MR data set. And there's a, certainly there's a bias in comparison with the 2D echo with the 3D echo. And uh, you can see the 2D echo is really not accurate for quantification of ventricular volume and ejection flashes. There's a one study using the contrast echo for enhancement of left ventricles for better endocardial border delineation. This technique is uh, very promising because uh, it could be can be easily to trace some endocardial border after contrast echo enhancement. And study from the uh, Jenkins, they show the 2D and 3D 
width of the contrast in comparison with the cardio MRI. You can see the contrast enhancement 3D echo study show better uh, results than the other 2D and 3D without contrast. So the n forum, n forum, and ejection factor quantification can get more accurate after the ventricular contrast enhancement. And there's a no inter-observer and intra-observer variation in the 2D, 3D contrast study. But in comparison with the 2D with or without contrast studies, they have a wide dispersion, uh, dispersion of the data. You can see the ventricular forum has a wide variability from the inter- and intra-observer variability studies. But uh, the main deep reasons is uh, if we using the 2D method for quantification with or without contrast echo, this takes uh, three to nine minutes to accomplish the, your study. But uh, using the 3D data set with or without contrast echo, we need more time to perform this study. So the 3D echo with contrast enhancement is providing very accurate method for quantification of left ventricle forum. But the major limitation of this technique is time consuming and uh, require expertise for quantification. So it takes longer time for processing the data for measurements. So that's the major limitation of the 3D echo with contrast enhancement for left ventricle function analysis. But, uh, but this is the most accurate method at this moment after the contrast enhancement really can improve your diagnosis accuracy for quantification of left ventricle forum. But in the third generation, I think they will provide a very rapid method for data acquisitions and it can be automatically quantification of lab ventricles, but we still need to wait for the final results about these uh, new techniques. But it's a very promising technique. The lab ventricle mass is very important for the clinical uh, assessing. The, on the 3D echo, we could calculate the lab ventricle mass by subtracting the endocardial forum from the epicardial forum and multiply it by the density of the cardiac muscles. This method has been very updated with cardiac MI showing excellent results. So the transthoracic 3D echo is an accurate method and very simple way to quantify the left ventricle mass. So this uh, information can be applied uh, in our daily practice and as a research tool for studying the uh, mass regression. In addition to the global left ventricle function, 3D echo also provides detailed information about the regional left ventricle function. Either could be displayed as a bull eye method using 60 segments or using the volume uh, data and time volume curve to display the regional uh, wall motions. So this information will be very helpful to determine the regional wall motion of the MADIS and study of the left ventricle dyssynchronies. There are several studies already shown using this technique can be applied on our CRT surface and uh, either using this time volume curve before and after CRT surface or using the parametric imaging to display the region of this colony area and uh, to show in before and after CRT service. So at this moment, the real-time 3D echo is a very accurate and reproducible method for quantification of global and regional lab ventricle function. But it's a, uh, it's an uh, off-time analysis needs uh, required training and uh, certainly sometimes we need the LV contrast for enhancement to get better results. Then I